Hey y'all, Billy from Perma Pastures Farm. Here we are in the chicken tractor on steroids. Okay, before we get off on and explain how this one is different than the ones we've done before, let me just go back and say we've got a playlist where we've done this system with meat birds. To my knowledge, we're the first people on the planet to do that. So we know it can be done, not with Cornish crosses, but it can be done with meat birds. We've also done this with, I'd say meat birds that we basically hatch. We've done it with layers. I've done it in the past. We don't, we didn't have a YouTube channel back in the day, but I've done it with a batch of Australorps. I've done it with a batch of another variety, three different batches going at the same time. So we have tested this thing I thought as far as it could possibly go, but we were wrong. Okay, over the last couple of weeks, we're actually more like a month, maybe a month and a half, we've been kind of up to our necks with a number of other things. Not in a bad way, it's just the realities of this life, y'all, as anybody knows. So we decided to go ahead and do an experiment to see if we could free up a little more time. So in a nutshell, if you go back Anybody that wants to know this in detail can check out the playlist, but in a nutshell, every week in all the iterations that we've done in the past, we produce one and a half cubic yards of compost per week. Fantastic. So over this latest, you know, month and a half or so, we said, okay, let's try it in a different way. Instead of doing that one month, doing it once a week, let's see if we can stretch it over two weeks because in the winter, you don't have the, typically these birds and a number of others are gonna be following the ruminants. Well, that's not such a wonderful idea in the dead of winter uh, for a whole variety of reasons that I could probably cut in a later video. So <laughs> this one here thinks William is a roost. Okay, I guess he wanted his, uh, look, hey, he just got his couple of minutes of fame, huh? So anyway, the difference in this system, let's just kind of go down here and I'll let you know. Well, first of all, we're producing this compost. Look at this, y'all. Bam. This one here, instead of going a week, this is going two weeks. And so what did we find out? We're gonna talk about that today. What we've been doing, instead of doing it, turning these piles, you know, once a week, which we do, we switched it up a little bit. So instead of turning these guys out once a week, we're going out once every two weeks. So, what does that mean? I mean, what are the consequences of doing that? Well, we didn't quite know because to my knowledge, I mean, outside of us doing it, I'm only aware of Two Old Crows Homestead, which by the way, you wanna check them out. They've done this and also Strand Farm. Both people, fortunately, I've had the real pleasure of meeting and they are fantastic, wonderful channels, wonderful people. Outside of us and them, I really don't know anybody else that's doing this. I've heard of other people out there, but as far as seeing it, I don't know how other people have done it. So the point being is that these other channels have done this and done it successfully, not necessarily doing it exactly the way we do. They're doing their own way, which is perfectly fine. And it's worked out for them. So we said, okay, now what if you needed them to be more static or stationary or in a place where you can't maintain it quite as long? Look, y'all, go back, watch that playlist, and instead of one week, do it every two weeks. Because we're finding out, just like I showed you a little bit ago with that compost, we're finding out that the consequences are really no different. The compost, they're gonna shred it a little bit more. And plus, honestly, there's gonna be a greater impact on that land, whereas them moving once a week, they're moving once every two weeks. So you're gonna have more bare spots. But we found out also that if we just leave a little spattering of the compost left behind guess what it comes back better than it ever did and we've even shown you videos of that happening so i have no reason to believe that if we do it for two weeks that the same isn't going to happen so all that's going to happen today i mean folks this is this is kind of a game changer for those of you out there that say hey i don't necessarily have enough time i don't have this i don't have that um I've been critical before about the people saying, well, at least in the last video, talking about, hey, that's too much work. Well, guess what? This kind of lessens your workload a great deal. How cool is that? All right, with that said, y'all, these guys definitely something see something in their compost cages they want. 
So all we're gonna do, we're gonna take that compost pile back here. We're gonna have it turn on the outside. We're actually gonna use it pretty quick. And then we're gonna commence to drive it on. All right, y'all, since that pile I just showed you is finished, and it's midday, typically we like to do this, it's, it's better when they're still in the chicken tractor when you do all this stuff because they'll just get in your way. Well, I need them out of my way right now. So we're gonna do one of those things we almost never do. You see that? That's store-bought food. Now, I got rice up there I could have used, but this was convenient. So all I'm gonna do is just come over here. Look here, bird. Bam! So now they're out of my way. So now that they're out of my way, I can go ahead. They're gonna basically decimate this pile. Feed them on a pile that still hasn't been disturbed and then go back here and move your fence. All right, the net's been expanded. These guys are at their Branson, Missouri, Golden Corral buffet. <laughs> and um, so here it is. They kicked a lot of this material out of here. But believe me, there's way more than the one and a half cubic yards in this cage right now, which is what this cage is meant to do. Now, I wanna also point this out because I know we got a lot of new people on. I'm gonna move this chicken tractor, but check out the feet on this bad boy. You see that? We built spikes in here because we're in some pretty doggone rough terrain. We're putting this thing sometimes on hills like that. So I need this thing to stick into the ground like that Thundercat mobile. And this here, to basically hold everything down, we basically tether it off with a couple of tent spikes. So with that said, let me go ahead and move this thing up. Pretty simple to do. I'm just gonna go for a ride, huh, bird? Bam, it's stuck to the ground. And then we'll take these tent spikes. And that just holds it even tighter. So when wind comes along, it ain't going nowhere. It's gonna have to take the whole thing. All right, so time to get the cage. Right after William's done, we got some of this clumping grass up in here. He's gonna hit it with the weed eater and then we're gonna reassemble the cage. Gotta take it like this and drag it on over. Now, William already hit it with the weed eater. We didn't catch that part on camera. So we're gonna stick it here. And before we do it, another thing, before we add anything to this, make absolutely sure the ground is wet. That's what we're gonna do next. We've got this chicken tractor, this chick saw that we modified and um, in the bottom of there was basically what do you see behind me a bunch of leaves right so uh yeah whatever you got plenty of that's carbon that's what we put down in there now we also have in here a tarp we just basically throw it down on there they go in there handle the business and then every day or every other day or so depending on what the manure load looks like we basically throw some more carbon on top so the composting process actually begins right here and on these really really cold nights in this system believe it or not it's creating some warmth not not that these guys need it i mean they're pretty squared away no matter what but the first thing we're going to do is take this tarp out of here stick it right there in that compost cage Come on. all right y'all here's one of those highfalutin contractor bags which by the way if you just kind of take your torch. I kind of got this idea watching my friend and mentor Danny at Deep South. You just kind of singe the edges on it. You keep this thing forever and a day and I'm all about saving some money. So anyway, what we normally do is take some leaves or whatever and we'll line the bottom of it. But in this case, trying another experiment. This one came out of where the bull goes in his little stall for the night and sleeps. Well, we take all that stuff, take it out. Well, I'm gonna put it in here. I've never done it this way before. I've always taken straight carbon. This time, like I said, we're gonna, we, we test this thing like nobody's business. I'm gonna go ahead and start it off with this. And then let me go ahead and quit for a second. I'm gonna start it off with this. And then I'm gonna cover it up every other day with 
leaves, some sort of carbon. It doesn't have to be leaves. It can be whatever you've got, as long as it's carbon. So far in there, we put down the water. Now we have the bedding along with the carbon. Now, what we have now is basically the bull poop or AKA Washington DC in these bags that we've collected that we're gonna dump out in here, okay? And this one just dropped an egg right there in there because I was too busy messing around. Look at this, right here in front of me. Really? All right, now that's cool. Now, what's gonna happen at this point, and this is mostly for the people that have never seen it before, every single day, twice a day, is what we normally feed them. I'll come out here, put the food scraps here, they're gonna eat it, they're gonna poop on it, and guess what? The compost process, the composting process has already begun when they were inside the chicken tractor. That's why I put the, part of the reason why I put the bedding down first. But if you didn't have bull poop along with some carbon, you could easily gather leaves. We've done it that way too, y'all. We've done an entire playlist on this stuff. That pile is where the cage was. So all we're gonna do, we're gonna take this hose. Now this is where we gotta play with it a little bit. Depending on the moisture and depending on what's happening in the rain. This isn't like an 18 day compost pile where it's covered with a tarp and it retains its moisture. This one takes a little more finesse. It's not hard, it just takes a little bit more time. So you wanna make sure it's a little bit moist in there. And right now I can guarantee you it isn't. So we're gonna add that with this as we flip it. So me and William will probably take turns. We're probably just gonna flip this pile from where it is. It's really not gonna do much of a footprint. It's really gonna be right about here. That pile is basically gonna come down and that pile is gonna come over. Really that simple. Now, anybody that was saying it was too much work doing this once a week, look y'all, we just shown it can be done every two weeks. So how cool is that? You got no excuses. Week two pile or week one or the first pile that was in the compost cage is done. This is the second oldest. That is the third oldest. Okay, so here's what happens. Okay, it's pretty compulsory at this point. All we're gonna do is basically take the remnant of this pile, they've spread it out obviously. We're, all we're gonna do is we're not even gonna really move it much out of its footprint. We're just gonna basically take all this, pile it up pretty much right there. That one is gonna come about right here. It's really that simple. And once a week, you gotta do it. Now, I'd be remiss if I didn't say, in an ideal world, what you should do is at the end of every day, come out there with a rake, just kind of bring it in. That's what you wanna do. You can even pile it and stack it back on up if you want to. That's what we typically do, but you don't have to. See, look here, I pulled it in, they pull it right back out. Chickens these days, can you believe it? All right, there you have it, y'all. So all the piles are filed up and you can even kind of see it in the right direction. You can see how that is much darker than that and that's much darker than that. And this ain't dark at all. But see, what's gonna happen, and you can see, like I said, go back to the playlist, but all that's gonna happen is that at the end of every single day when we put the food down, we're gonna come back before we feed them again. It could be that night, it could be the morning, whichever you prefer. 
we're gonna come down right here and dump another contractor bag full of, actually it's gonna be, it could be one, I prefer to do two, but because we're waiting two weeks to move this thing right now, I'm gonna put one. So at the end of every single day, I'm gonna dump another bag of, it can be straight up carbon, it can be carbon with poop in it. So that'll go down. And then we'll repeat the process every single day for two weeks now instead of one. So for those of you out there saying that's too much work, guess what? We just made it a lot easier. And everything you just saw really only needs to happen every two weeks, if that's the way you wanna do it. So we know that it can be done weekly. And if you're in a bind or things ain't going right, guess what? It is very, very forgiving. You just, the only real big thing is you gotta worry about your moisture. So also keep in mind, because where we were putting it out every once or one and a half cubic yards every week, now your time on all that just doubled, you dig? So it's gonna take longer. So you can do it weekly or you can do it every two weeks, whichever you prefer, because we've proven that it does work. Either way, this is a very, very forgiving system. It just requires, look, it's not gonna be as simple as just spreading out your feed and letting them go after it. It does require something of you. But the cool thing is, I get chickens for free. I get compost for free. I get meat for free, all out of this system. How's that, y'all? So I can't, I'm, I mean, I can't think of a better system. And especially in these times, look, I'm not gonna keep beating a dead horse. We all know what's going on. We all see those inflation prices. If you wanna mitigate those things, if you got more time than money, Look, even the bird's giving me an amen. Say it again, bird. Okay, yeah, the birds these days. Anyway. <laughs> right on cue. So anyway, if you want to try to, it's going to require a little more elbow grease than what a lot of people are accustomed to. But if you want this stuff for free or with very, very, very little cost, if any, um, this is the one for you. All right, y'all, so check out the description box below if there's anything there you need. It helps us out. Check us out on Patreon. Check out the website, y'all. We got the world's best deer repellent called Bone Sauce. And we got Comfrey. We got spoons. Check it out. All right, y'all. Hopefully this stuff is a blessing to you. Till next time, this is Billy from Permapastures Farm, where permaculture is my passion. We'll see you next time.